we were doing a lot of local TV programs on them grabbing poor people's children. And it, and it would be a man and a woman, mm-hmm. and they would be poor. And they don't know when they go to, quote, get the free welfare birth at the city hospital that they take their children, especially if they're white, because they can get, like, close to half a million bucks for them in adoption. I guess those children are blessed in a way. They don't get taken for medical experiments or, like the other minority kids, they hop up on drugs because they get more federal funds for that. You see, the evil's built into the system. Yeah. But but I couldn't do it anymore. I, I couldn't go down to the hospitals when people called me because it was always the same Special units of pedophile police, you know, that look, that Nelliness, that, the, the, you know, the, the, the sick smile, it's like a certain demon. I don't even know how to describe it. You know the, 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 the MO. You see a cop changing a tire. He's a tough guy, great guy, family. He's out there just doing his job. You know, most of the cops aren't bad. You see him, that's a normal guy. You can tell. You know, with these guys, if you've been around them enough, it's always the pedophile CPS, sickos. It's always the pedophile cops. It'd always be the same cops. Uh, or they look the same. It's like a, it's, it, 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 it's, I mean, they could be black or white. They have the same look, the same eyes, the same smile. They enjoy the woman screaming and begging as they take the baby. They always go in and say, sign this form and you can keep your baby. They sign the form and the form agrees to give their baby up. Uh, they would say, well, because you're poor and because your husband's an auto mechanic and, uh, you're living in a week to week hotel and they're like, but my sister's coming with money. Ah. They're like, no, you, you know, you're poor. So the child's at risk. We're taking it. And then you go to the court case, and the CPS is so lazy. They t- uh, it's a newborn baby. This is one case. They would they took a case of a three year old child who had been abused by someone under another name, and just copied the text and changed their name at the top with different circumstances. And the judge just didn't care and took the child. The family wasn't you know didn't know how to fight it. They they waved. Uh, but, but, you know, I mean, they don't even fill out the forms right. There isn't even, uh, any due process. And they, they enjoy as the mother has her soul being torn out. They enjoy, uh, the, the, uh, howling. And, and, and then there I am, like a literal fiery laser beam burning out my soul, uh, in just anguish and torment, watching her torment. And I'm literally about to hit my knees, but I'm not crying. And I'm knowing that if I assault these people, I'm going to go to prison. They're going to have their way with me. And I'm sitting there watching them feed like demonic entities as the baby's being taken and how they're smiling. I mean, damn them to hell. Well, I know. I see this all the time, too. And it's like uh, it's a sickness that's spreading, you know, Uh, and we have to somehow find a way to encourage people of goodwill to confront that. And that's a big job, just getting people to find the courage and to do that. Um, but, I mean, you know, how but do you I'll do just... it? I can't do it anymore. I can cover it on the air. Yeah. I can barely have these women and men on just hearing it because the flashbacks. How do people like you constantly live in this and watch them ripping the innocent apart? How do you watch the murders? How do you watch them hurting children? Well, How I, do you do it? You find other people who are willing to speak out and fight back. And, you know, a lot of the people I work with, they're homeless native men and women. You know, they may have nothing, but they have the integrity to get up, and we stand outside these churches, and we confront these people going in and saying, look, you got to, you got to, you know, take a stand here. And they, their courage helps me, and my courage helps them. You know, we do this together. We don't do it on our own. So it is the brotherhood, the sisterhood. Definitely. And I find that all the time. I... You know, I'm encouraged by them all the time. I find the strength at the roots. I don't find it, you know, uh, it's not going to come from uh, the government or anybody. No, no, power is weak. Evil power is weak. These are very, ugh, they're sick. Yep. You know, I've seen how people heal from this, too. Like, one of the guys I work with, he's a severe alcoholic because he was tortured on a rack. They had in this Catholic residential school, they had actually a rack set up where they would torture kids. And uh, he's never been able to talk about it. But one day, uh, last Easter, actually, we went into a Catholic Mass and just stood there very quietly and nonviolently with a banner, and it said, all the children need a proper burial. And we walked out of there, and the whole congregation stood up in respect as we walked out, because they were acknowledging. I mean, the priests were very angry at us, but they were all welcoming us. When we got out of that church, uh, William, this man who had gone through the school, he... There was a light in his eye I had never seen before, and the next day he stopped drinking for the first time in 18 years, you know, because he felt the power. He was able to find his voice and act and, and confront these guys, and that was his healing. And, you know, that's the way we do it. We do it public and we do it together. Uh, otherwise, you know, they, they thrive off the fact that we feel isolated and demoralized and alone, but we have to break through that all the time. And knowledge is power, you know. You arm people with knowledge, and you, you just be out there where they're suffering, and you carry it on. I mean, you know, we do that together. 
Absolutely. I mean, for people who haven't seen this, uh, it's it's just unspeakable. Mm-hmm. And and society's imploding because all this evil is in control, and then so there is bad stuff happening in families. There are bad people individually doing things as well, and the establishment publicizes all of that to make the people look bad but make the system look good. Uh, but from what you're saying, it 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 looks like you, you've had some progress. I mean, it's been in the news that you know, many yeah. of this is going on. What has it turned into? What are they currently doing? How have they tried to camouflage it? Well, they're spinning it. They're finally they're taking a lot of the information I have and spinning it to make it look like they knew all this along, and they're they're disclosing it now and they're admitting. And that. they need more funding. Yeah, and and they're they're saying basically we've given apologies and and some financial compensation. Now the issue is resolved. With the apology, the issue is resolved. Which is ridiculous because on the street, people are suffering more. They're dying at a higher rate from this. You know, they get a bit of money in compensation, and people go in an overdose on drugs with that money, and that's intentional. You know, um, so the the government and the churches are making it look like, you know, it's amazing what they've done. They've committed the crime. They've gotten away with it, and now they're coming across, trying to make themselves look good in the process. Um, and they're not, uh, you see, they're not disclosing anything. So it's almost like they're saying there was a big crime, but there are no criminals. Uh, so we've been pushing for years to get them to uh, admit where these children are buried. We've been trying to bring the children's remains home for a proper burial, having memorial sites, and bringing people to trial for these crimes. So that's really what we're pushing. And the very fact that the Prime Minister would be forced to acknowledge this in Parliament, and party leaders were actually getting up and talking about these grave sites, I mean, that's an amazing accomplishment. And by the uh, way, every few weeks I see a new article out of Florida or Texas or New York yeah. where they go into orphanages and dig up a bunch of dead bodies. I mean, this is right. a this is a guild. This is a yeah. this is a this is a Satan worshiping whatever you want to call it even if they don't physically worship Satan. That's that's what the the vibe is, the spirit is who want to feed on innocence. And it, it's 180 yeah. degrees from who I am. I don't even claim to be the best person in the world. But the point is, it, I I've got this I love children. I love their innocence. I want to protect them. How could you want to hurt a child? I just want well, to kill these people. Yeah, well, I mean, it's kind of like both extremes are happening at the same time, Alex. The exposure is happening, people are more aware now, and that evil is trying to entrench itself all the more. And the reality is these institutions have their backs against the wall now. They've admitted it, they're trying to spin it, but it's not going to work because more and more people are coming forward now with the truth. And I'm actually very encouraged by what's happening, you know, the, the power of just telling the truth. Um, I, I just want to remind people again to go to our site and look at our film. It's www.hiddenfromhistory.org, and spread that around. I'm actually planning to come down to the United States uh, in February and March on a speaking tour, and, and it, would, it would be a, a good way to connect and, and uh, carry this on, because I know that there's going to be even better changes happening. Absolutely. Well, it's hard for me, and I'm sorry I've been, been whining just to even focus right. in on this, because uh, but, but, but your strength... I can feel your strength, and I agree with you. It, it is the fact that you know you're fighting evil, you know you're having an effect, and there is this brotherhood, this sisterhood, and resistance to it. Stay there, my friend. I want to come back and uh, let you get to any other points you want, and I want to have you back up for a second uh, longer interview to take phone calls in the near future. We'll be right back with Reverend Kevin Annette. And look what you've done by yourself, joining with the Native peoples. It's just another example of what we can all do, and so many of you are those leaders we need, men, women, black, white, old, young, uh, it doesn't matter who need to just start the fight for liberty and freedom and, and against all these crimes, and then dividends will be paid in freedom, uh, in humanity, in, in decency, in honor. And so I, I just salute what you're doing, and, and, and it's up to good Christians who aren't, you know, this wicked counterfeit New World Order Christianity uh, to realize that most of the powerful churches, if not all, are bought and paid for by the New World Order. That's why they're in those positions. I commend your courage. I commend your work, Reverend. Kevin Annette, and we'll talk to you again in the near future. Thank you, Alex. You bet. Take care. All right, folks, we'll be right back. Stay with us.